then there exists a bijection between this and this, yes? But wait, what about n minus itself, uh, minus uh, one of the, its elements? There's a bijection between this and what? And n by the previous example. So I claim also there exists a bijection. Let's give this a name. I'll call this one h prime, or h hat. That's a little nicer. And there's also a bijection. We call it f by the previous example. Uh, that goes between this creature and n. So I have a bijection between this and this and this and this. Therefore, there's a bijection between what? By composing these functions? Between this and this, a bijection. Oh, interesting. And so what I've shown is if there were a bi secret bijection between j n plus 1 and n, there is one between j n and n, and that is the contrapositive of this statement. Okay, so um, uh, this statement, we've just established this inductive step. Okay, so the conclusion is there exists a bijection uh, uh, between uh, n and j plus uh, j sub n. And that establishes the inductive step. Okay, Bonnie. Um, sorry. Let's see. So if we want to show that that there, if there were. Oh, yes, sorry, thank you, thank you. Um, right, the inductive step is to show that if there is a bijection between n and, and this, then there's a bijection between n plus 1 and this, right? So actually, maybe I need to, right, I'm not doing the contrapositive. I want to do it directly, and I still want to use a lot of the same ideas, thank you, um, but I probably need to construct this differently. Yes, wait, let me, let me hear what Jenny had to say. And and that right and that is the inductive step we want, right? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay, right. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so the comment was um, Thank you. I am. I've messed this up. The inductive step is j n plus one is not. If there were a bijection between n and j n plus one, then there's a bijection between n and j n. That establishes the inductive step because the claim is there is no such bijection, uh, and uh, this is the inductive step that's re that's required. The base case was there is no bijection uh, between uh, the whole thing and one. And this is now showing if there is no bijection between Jn and n, then there wouldn't be one between Jn plus 1 and n. And that's established by showing the contrapositive, which shows that Jn plus 1, if, if this occurred, this would occur. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it like that because this was supposed to be just a sketch. Thank you. Okay, so what's the key idea here? The key idea here is n is infinite, and the, the way we showed it was it's infinite because it actually can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with a subset of itself, Okay, which is actually a very surprising fact uh, that at first blush seems really ridiculous. Right? How can you have a set that, in some sense, has the same size as a subset, a proper subset of itself? And it turns out that that is actually um, something that characterizes infinite sets. You can show that 
infinite sets, a set is infinite if and only if it can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with a subset of itself. And we've just seen that here. Perhaps even more dramatically, if I wanted to, I claim I could put n into one-to-one -one correspondence with the subset of even natural numbers. So um, how would you do that? Here's the even natural numbers. The even natural numbers here are 2, 4, 6, 8, dot, dot, dot. And what's the correspondence then? What would I associate to a number here? Yeah, f of n equals 2n. So the natural numbers and the even natural numbers have the same size in some sense. Okay? We have a, a word for this. We use the term cardinality or cardinal number. We say um, n and 2n uh, have the same cardinality. It's, it's a mat mathematician's word for size. And what that really means is they can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence. How many people find that at least a little bit surprising? A little bit. I mean, then when you see it, and of course, it's not surprising anymore. Question? Yeah. So the question was, Yes, I believe you, but can't you also say that for every element in n, there are two things in here? Is that your question? Uh, and the answer is, yeah, but the definition of one-to-one -one correspondence is you just have to find some correspondence between bijection between n and 2n to show that they have the same cardinality. It doesn't preclude the possibility that there could be other uh, mappings that are 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 or or uh, n to 1. Okay. Yeah, it's a little strange, right? I mean, uh, I think you're thinking, OK, well, if I look at the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, there is a way I can uh, associate a 2 to 1 mapping as well. Fine. You do that. I can't stop you from doing that. Okay. But the definition of same size is this notion of 1 to 1 correspondence. All right. Excellent. So we've now established that countable sets are, in, in fact, exist. And they are, well, we know they exist, but they're definitely different from finite sets in a very interesting way. Hmm, OK. Well, what about um, all, the nat all the integers? Is z countable? Can you associate to z? which, if you remember, is infinite in both directions. Can you associate to this uh, a, a bijection uh, that will put this into correspondence with the natural numbers? How many people say yes? Most, some of you have seen that. Uh, you want to suggest one, Rebecca? Yeah, and let's not bother writing out the definition because it could be messy. Well, just, just tell me where to start. Let's call this one. How about starting calling this one 1? And then what? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, do you agree that this pattern could be continued and that I could, if you forced me to, write down a definition like that? Yeah, you probably just take care of the zero first and then use some um, thing here that depends on whether the argument's odd or even. Okay? Excellent. So z, in fact, is countable. Oh, really? Okay. Z is countable, 2n is countable. Um, it, the set of even integers is also countable. Can you see how to, to uh, show that the even integers? Minus 6, minus 4, minus 2, 0, 2, 4, 6 is going to be 